Um, we do have a couple of announcements um, that need to be made. And um, who's going first? Um, Grace, you want to? Okay, this might be the last call for Easter dinner. And then you've missed your chance until Thanksgiving time. So, <laughs> but <clears throat> everyone is welcome. One o'clock on Easter Sunday, my house. You need to know how to get there, let me know. One of my young friends insists that we call them angeled eggs instead of deviled eggs. But anyway. Let me know so I know how many deviled eggs I'm going to make, okay? Thank you. Good morning. I want to thank all of you that signed up to help with the Easter breakfast. We have I think plenty of people, so the rest of you can just come and enjoy the food. And I would like all the people that signed up to help come to a meeting right after church Monday, Thursday, and we will make arrangements for the utensils that we need and get everything lined up, make sure we have enough food and get ourselves organized so that we don't have to do it Sunday morning. Thank you. Yes, anyone else? I don't have one of those. What does it say? Oh, yeah. There are announcements on the back of the bulletin. And a, th a thanks to everyone who was able to come yesterday and help out. Because there were some slackers that weren't able to be here. So uh, thank you for for those who are able to do that. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, anything else? OK, so um, we do have. Oh, yeah, Pat and Amy. Are they here someplace? Well, welcome, Amy. It's so nice to see you. Oh, Pat, too, yeah. Well, the word for the day is a word that I'm sure you've used in a sentence many times in this past year. Yes, Melchizedek. I'm sure you've often said, oh yeah, just like Melchizedek. He's actually one of my, one of my favorite figures in the Old Testament. And this is why. What do we know about Melchizedek? He was the king of Salem, which we know as Jerusalem. And his name means king, king of righteousness. Okay. And he came to Abram. Before it became Abraham. He came to Abram and ministered, brought some food to Abram early on in the book of Genesis. Well, that's the extent of it. Except in our second lesson. He is mentioned, um, and Jesus is, is referred to as a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. What? That's the mystery. But um, it's the next letter. It's what you do when you're playing pool. You rack them. Ah, okay, maybe not. Okay. Uh, it'll, it'll come out next week. Uh, and all of these things, now, th these last two have nothing to do with the covenant that are in our lessons. And you'll hear very clearly in our first lesson the new covenant that God makes with God's people. But these are the words. One more will help us spell our word for this season of Lent. So please join me in the confession and forgiveness. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the laws on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in the snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard our resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. Forgive these things and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gathering hymn is, My Song is Love Unknown. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, with steadfast love, love, you draw us to yourself, yourself, and in mercy, in mercy you, you receive, receive our, our prayers. prayers. Strengthen, Strengthen us to bring, bring forth the fruits, fruits of, the of the Spirit, 
that through through life life and and death death, we may may live live in your your Son, Son, Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, our our Savior and Lord, Lord, who lives lives and reigns with you and the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, one one God, God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for today is from Jeremiah 31, beginning with the 31st verse. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's read responsibly the Psalm 51, beginning with the first verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, and your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, wickedness, and and cleanse me from from my sin. sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak, and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with the hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear the joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The second reading is from Hebrews, the fifth chapter, starting with the fifth verse. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. To the Lord your God. Is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel from John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, We wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, 
Unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. During this season of Lent, we pause to reflect on what it means to see Jesus. This text, I always chuckle when it comes up because it reminds me of a couple things. And one of the things is an old commercial. Now, looking across, maybe some of you are old enough to remember and have heard of Netflix, okay? Well, no, not, not the present form. Um, way back when they started, they had advertisements on the radio. And I was traveling between churches and to various hospitals, and so I listened to the radio a lot. And I love this when this commercial came on, but this text always reminds me of that commercial. One of the first commercials for Netflix way back when was kind of a, a setup of a game show. And there was an MC and a contestant. And the MC simply came on and said, if Bob has blue eyes, and Tom has green eyes, what does Harry have? And you hear this music, and the contestant says, bronchitis? Correct! <laughs> what? Blue eyes, green eyes, bronchitis? It made no sense what's, I loved it, because it made no sense. I, it was just so silly. That's what this text reminds me of. Because if you hear this text, it all begins out, you know, very simply. Two, two Greeks come to Philip and say, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Okay. So Philip goes to Andrew. And then he, Philip and Andrew go to Jesus and say, Jesus, there's some people that would like to see you. And how does Jesus respond? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it won't bear fruit. And those who hate their life in this world will have it for eternal life, and those who love their life will lose it. And what? I'm, I just, I can picture Philip and Andrew looking at each other saying, what? Is medical marijuana illegal? What? I mean, you know, because it made no sense to them. But it does. When you go back and hear it again, the question, or the, the, the request was, there are some people who would like to see you, Jesus. Well, what does it mean to see Jesus? And Jesus' kind of off the wall response is well placed. Because he's describing what it means to see Jesus, to see the Messiah. Now, just before this, immediately just before this, Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead. And as they travel on, some of the people who were there followed Jesus. And the re religious authorities were concerned because people were beginning to follow after Jesus and even believe in Jesus. And Jesus knew that as well. 
And so Jesus wants his disciples and all to know what it means to see him, the Messiah what it means to see Jesus. And it isn't just a miracle worker who raises people from the dead. It's one who, like a grain of wheat, will die. And that will come very soon. And once that grain of wheat dies, it sprouts up and bears fruit. And so will Jesus when he rises from the dead. And Jesus wants everybody to see that that he's more than just the miracle worker. And that he goes on in our text. And he says, so this is going to happen to me. And I'm troubled that it's coming. But what should I say to, 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 to God the Father? Should I say, save me from this hour? No, he said, that's the reason I came. I came to do this in order to glorify the Father's name. And so he says, Father, glorify your name. And then there's a voice from heaven that speaks out. Some said it was thunder. Others said it was an angel. And Jesus concludes this interaction by telling the people that when he, the Son of Man, is lifted up from the earth, he will draw all people to himself. He says this in order to make the focus away from him as a miracle worker to let them see that to be the Messiah is to be about service and giving one's life for the sake of others and to see that he is in the Father's hands, that God is indeed in charge of all of this. Whoa, kind of a crazy way to do it. But I think he's preparing them and especially the disciples, because later on in chapter, this is 12, in chapter 17, uh, he will be more explicit with his disciples to help them grasp all the events that are taking place. But he wants to make it clear that the focus is upon God and what God is doing. And that's what our first lesson is about, too. That's the covenant of this week, where Jeremiah announces a new covenant. Well, it's not really a new covenant. It's a new way of the, the covenant being delivered. It's not being carved on, a, on some stones or written on paper, um, but it's written in the hearts of God's people. And the promise, the covenant that is written is, I will forgive your sins. I will not remember your sins anymore. It's a promise of God for God's people to let them know that they are not alone, that they are forgiven, that they are free. And even in our second lesson in that crazy Melchizedek, I love that. That should remind me of that commercial too, but it's kind of crazy, Melchizedek. Um, because here's all of a sudden this character that predates Abraham who is a high priest of God. And we know little about him. Oh, and in that mystery, we're simply left to trust. To trust that God knows what he's doing, and even if we don't agree, to trust God, that God's compassion and love for God's people is true, and to rely on that. So what does it mean for us in our lives to see Jesus? Have we seen Jesus active in our lives in this past week? There was a bishop that used to scare the bejeebers out of congregations when he'd come to visit for whatever reason. Sometimes it was conflict, most of the times it was not. But one of the first things as he met with the council or representatives of the congregation would be to ask where people had seen Jesus in the past week. Uh, that was the first reaction. Oh, uh, see Jesus? Um, uh, and his whole point was if we don't see the hand of God active in our lives, how do we expect others to see the same? And people eventually got used to it and were prepared and began to see 
things that they hadn't seen before. What does it mean for us to see Jesus? Do we see Jesus and the hand of God in our lives during the week? What does it mean to see Jesus? Maybe it means to be concerned and take action on food scarcity in our community. Maybe it means a phone call. Maybe it means a hot dish or casserole or a piece, some cake or a gift or, or just a phone call to someone who is hurting or someone who is lonely. What does it mean to see Jesus? And do we hear God speaking to us? Do we hear God speaking through others, through his word, through his sacraments? Do we hear God speaking to us in our lives? Or do we hear just thunder? During this Lenten season, as it's quickly drawing to a uh, close, we pause to reflect on what it means to see Jesus. May God indeed, in his grace, Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. To hear him speaking to us. To hear him calling us. And by his grace, may indeed we be faithful to our Lord and faithful to our calling. Amen. Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need.
God of the covenant, through the church, you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and inter international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. Merciful God. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O oh God. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lowly, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, especially Patrick, missionary to Ireland, whom we commemorate today. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O oh God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you. Is indeed right, our calling and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. 
that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come, come for all is ready.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood remain with us as we seek to take the message of love and grace into the world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world in the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people. Holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you. Shower you with mercy and fill you with courage and give you peace. Amen. Thanks. 